Hello, what's up guys? It is I, Deltre, and we are back with some more Fire Emblem Awakening Lunatic Classic. Last time we saved three villagers whose combined IQ totals less than that of Krom's age from the greatest enemy of all. Themselves, man, themselves. And we also recruited a little girl on over to the side of our cause. Of course she's a dragon because this is Fire Emblem, what else is new? And I have to say, now that we've got a few maps under our belt here, this is a very different experience from the last time I tried playing Lunatic Mode on this game. Using an entire team is just, it's, it's a very different experience, I have to be honest with you. And if you're not already familiar with Lunatic Mode and Awakening, you might say, well, using a whole team, of, of course, Deltry, why would you not? Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, I feel that, I feel like if I would have just been using Robin and nobody else, or in this case, if I would have just been using Hey You and nobody else, oh man, <laughs> this could be a very different experience. It, it really is. It's not... It's not nearly the same. It's way more challenging in this game, I think, to try and raise a team. I, It's so weird for me. It really is, because I can't think of any other Fire Emblem game where that is truly the case. I mean, yeah, you could joke about, like, I don't know, Fire Emblem 8, let's say, and Seth the Broken. Like, he's super, super broken, don't get me wrong, but even then, even then you still want to train other people. It's not, it's not like this monumental task like it feels like it is in this game. But it's it's been a lot of fun doing things this way. It's, it's it's way more rewarding. I'll say that. It's definitely more rewarding to try and play Lunatic with a full team. If you've never tried it yourself, I, I can honestly say it's been it's been interesting, if nothing else. Anyways, answering the real questions here, we have Philip Hauser in response to the Virion not the Virion Muriel, the Virion Hey You support. Hello, where's my brain? He says, not too sure about swans, Deltre, but geese at least are incredibly territorial when it comes to their nests. I've seen them charge entire groups of people that got too close. So this I should have known. I should have known that about geese. And really, it, I guess in that sense, it doesn't surprise me that maybe swans are kind of fierce. I don't know. It seems like most birds are very territorial of their space. Just about any bird I can think of, really. But I had to have a good laugh about this comment because the exact same thing happened to me when I was a kid. Geese are dangerous, y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we're at this park, right? I'm just a wee lad, like four or five years old. I have some bread. I decided to feed the geese. Terrible idea. Terrible, terrible idea. These are some greedy people. These are some greedy ass birds. Always wanting more, because I, I ran out of I ran out of food or whatever I was giving to them very quickly. I think it was bread. I think we brought some specifically to feed the birds. Which uh, turned out to be a terrible idea. Because they got really mad when I stopped feeding them. And they chased my four or five year old ass all the way back to my parents, dude. <laughs> the most dramatic experience of my life. But then I grew up. Yeah, that's right. The hunter has become the hunted. What's up, geese? What's up, geese? You think I'm afraid of a goose now? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I run this shit. That's right. You know what they used to call me back in high school? They used to call me Goose Master Deltray. Master of geese and all things geese related. Easily the lamest of all my talents. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I still think it's a weird comparison, though. You don't normally think of swans, of all things, as being this dangerous enemy. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Piplup's Rock comes in with some interesting trivia about the supports in previous entries of the series, and he says, An interesting fact about the consistency. Path of Radiance actually has some very interesting changes in the supports. Path of Radiance actually has different supports between Tormat and Soth. If Morm is dead, his support is actually slightly different. Just something really interesting I thought I'd note, and I'd like to see more of it in the future. I agree 100%. I didn't even know that was a thing, to my knowledge. I, I certainly don't remember it, not off the top of my head. So that is cool. That is cool. I like having little bits of detail like that that sort of, it, it makes the conversations feel more real, for one, right? Because if you were... See, I, I shouldn't assume everybody's played Path of Radiance. So, in Path of Radiance, right, Tormod and Moram are essentially best friends, more or less. And if one of your best friends died, of course you would, you would grieve. You would bring that up in conversation. So, what, what, he, what he's saying is that, depending on who lives, who dies, and that sort of thing, it, it's, it changes the way that characters will interact with each other, and that is so cool. That is so cool. That is something that I would love to see return, but again, with the way that they've been doing supports for the last few games, well, I shouldn't say that. Echoes didn't do this. Echoes didn't do this. But yeah, if you just look at, like, the amount of supports that Hey You has, how could you possibly make all of these unique? You, you know what I'm saying? And even, even to add little details like that to all of these, how could you do it? I mean, I guess you don't have to do it for all of them, but it's just, it's an overwhelming amount of work, really, when you have that amount of supports. And yeah, Hey You is the, obviously the extreme example, right? Because she can support everybody. 
she can support everybody in the game. But you get my point, I hope. It can be very hard to do details like that when the amount of support is just so outrageous, you know what I mean? But that's definitely a point in Path of Radiance's favor, for sure. And it would be something that I would like to see, and I would hope that they would emulate that style a little bit more closely, you know what I mean? Going forward. <laughs> a Paranova says, at 1530. I, I assume this is the Frederick Sumia support. I, I didn't look up the timestamp, but I assume that's what this is. It says, if Frederick doesn't stop being so rough, he might break the horses. Yes. Yes, my dude. <laughs> if you have no idea what this is talking about or why, I would include this in... <laughs> In the original fan translation of Berwick Saga, another game that I played a bit on this channel, <laughs> when... <laughs> uh, memories. So, I guess first I should explain that Berwick Saga is a game very similar to Fire Emblem in a lot of ways. It's even created by the guy who made the first five Fire Emblem games, so just to give you an idea. But, <laughs> in that game, your horses could die, okay, if they took too much damage. But, <laughs> in the original fan translation, that's, uh, it's currently ongoing, it's not completed just yet, but in the original version of that, whenever your horse died in Barrack, it said, your horse broke. Like it's a weapon or some crap. So thank you to this guy for, <laughs> for one, watching Barrack Saga, because that's a great game. And for two, <laughs> uh, good times, good times, man. So I was kind of surprised that so many of you guys were surprised that I didn't really know all that much about Three Houses. Uh, so... I, I don't know why this is so surprising to so many people, but no, I really don't know anything about Three Houses, guys. It's like... Alright, so... When Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, a game I'm sure that not everybody here cares about, but when that when that game came out, right, I went into it completely blind. And... I realized after the fact that my experience with the game was much better as a result. Because... <laughs> well, as it turned out, they spoiled basically everything there was to that game in the marketing. And that was one of the first things that I, like, I saw, for, as far as fan reactions and things like that go. People were saying, oh my god, they actually did it. They actually showed every meaningful story moment in the trailers. Every single one. And after I completed the game, I went back, I looked at some of the marketing, and I said to myself, oh my god, they really did. They spoiled the entire game. So that was one very big reason that I just... I just do not care for the way the games are marketed anymore these days, to be honest. That was a really eye-opening moment for me. Because I realized that a lot of people went into that game with insanely high expectations because of the way that it had been presented, right? Because of the, the marketing tactics and whatnot. So I figure that if I'm going to buy the game anyways, right? In, in the case of Three Houses, if I'm going to buy the game anyways, then what is the point of looking up any kind of information on the game? It's actually just going to hurt my enjoyment of the game. Full stop. As no disrespect for the people that sort of survive on that type of thing, but I just it doesn't do anything for me. It's not the type of content that I am personally interested in watching to begin with. So, it's very easy for me to just avoid it altogether as a result. And besides, I've been a part of fan bases whose games literally revolve around story and nothing else. So it's like, <laughs> sooner or later, you have to be good at dodging that kind of thing. And finally, we have the Donald, <laughs> the Donald argument, I guess, by Devjin. I'm actually not going to read out this whole thing. Uh, it's just going to be on screen, but I had a good laugh at this. So <laughs> congratulations, dude. You have made your case. I have taken each of these arguments into consideration. And with that. It is time that we reach our verdict for young Donna Boy. So I think that, in light of this new information, uh, and the fact that I would also really like somebody who gives a good amount of strength, we are going to go with young fighter Donna Boy. I think my favorite argument for this guy, though, was the fact that the pot on his head will match his new armor. I want to see if this is true or not. I can't remember if I've ever used Fighter Donald over Mercenary. Oh my god, it does. <laughs> it's like it was meant to be this way all along. What? That's crazy. Oh, naughty boy. Look at these stats. Look at these stats. This is insane. He has 17 strength, and he's actually kind of tanky now. Oh, he actually gets his ability instantly? Seriously? I didn't realize that. Barracks! Let's get some items, dude. 17 points for Gregor. Man! Give me that Tiggy's tier. <laughs> That's what I need. Lonku and Muriel. 
Watch, no, stay away from me. Beep boop, beep boop. Oh, Gregor, my dude, what do we got? A miniature lance. What? <laughs> Money more like. Probably about to sell that boy. I'm so broke, guys. How much money do I even have? Yeah, I have no money. I have 24 gold to my name. Jesus. It's almost like those stat boosters are expensive or something. But we do have speed tonics and the like. Now, I'm probably going to have to use those without a doubt. Now, Frederick and Sumia. Ooh, S rank. Steamy. S for steamy. Let's do it. Oh, we've got the sappy music and everything. Oh, man. You know, I gotta say, this is one of those things that I feel probably doesn't get talked about quite as much when it comes to these whole S supports thing, but let's think about this for a second now. Let, let's take a moment, take a step back, look at the bigger picture here, because all of these S supports end in marriage, like, on the spot. No, like, implied they got together and then 10 years later they got married or whatever. No, 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 no. This is going to end with Frederick and Sumia tying the knot. Okay, let's think about that. Let, let's assume each battle is a day Because that seems to be about in line with the pacing of the story so far, right? So let's say each battle is a day and that and that's very generous by the way Considering that some of these were no doubt two battles in a day like the prologue to chapter one That was one day as far as we know But let's just say for each chapter we've done that today. So let's say it's been about ten days Ten days for this entire game to take place to this point, okay? That means that Frederick and Sumia went from whatever they were before this, I guess, co-workers, basically, right? Because they're both shepherds still. But they went from basically co-workers to married in about a week. Because let's not forget, Sumia wasn't around for the first three maps. What the hell, game? <laughs> forget the whole four conversations thing. This is the real beef right here. There is no way. I don't care how good Frederick is. I do not care. There is no amount of stats in the world that could... <laughs> Or maybe he's just got a mad game, and I just can't keep up. That's probably what's going on here, right? Okay, Frederick, you beast, sell me on this. Frederick, I've been meaning to thank you. You're the one who polished my armor to such a lovely sheen, right? What? I wasn't sure you'd notice. Yes! Of course I noticed. My plated and weapons have never looked so good. Except for when they're stained with the blood of my enemies. <laughs> Whoa there, Subia. Why, I glittered like a lighthouse on my ride today. I actually felt pretty. You're always beautiful to me, Sumia. In truth, I've eyes for no one else. <laughs> Not even Krom. Got him. <laughs> Tis no laughing matter, milady. I serve Krom because I have sworn to do so. He is my lord and master. But when in your presence, I cannot tear my eyes from you. I'm captivated. True at first, it was because I feared you might blunder into a nearby tree. And it did happen several times. But soon I found myself gazing at you whenever the opportunity permitted. Huh? No, Frederick. Really? Please, milady, would you do me the honor of accepting this gift? <sighs> it's the most beautiful ring I've ever seen, Frederick. Does it mean what I think it means? Ah. My heart is yours, milady, now and forever, if you would only but claim it. But... But why, Frederick? It's been literally seven days. I'm so inept at everything. Weeding, fire starting, wagon repair. <laughs> There's some awfully specific tasks. Never fear. None of that matters so long as you are by my side. I just can't imagine. That was amazing. Gods, this ring is so shiny. He must have polished it for days. Frederick, this is the nicest thing that anyone has ever done for me. <sighs> you deserve it and more. Word that I could, I would present you with the moon herself. Yes! Well, you can always ask Muriel. She's got this whole gravity theory going on. I don't know if, if that's really going to go anywhere, but... I don't want the moon, Frederick. I just want you. So yes, 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 and yes again. You've made me the happiest woman alive. And then they boned. More importantly, though, question mark? I mean, depending on your perspective. This means that this is now a wombo combo, because if you are as supported with somebody, I'm pretty sure that dual attacks have like an 80% chance to go off. Just about. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you thought they were a pair before, oh my god. Oh my god, it's about to get so much better. <laughs> uh, I guess that means that Krom can finally talk to Simi. <laughs> Maybe we do that, but Muriel, hey you, go. Yeah, I don't know though, I think moving forward, it would probably be better if they just did paired endings though. Just because, it kinda, <laughs> it kinda eliminates that whole issue where Frederick and Sumia seriously got married in a week. Like, that that was a real thing, that happened. That definitely happened. And <laughs> you, can, you can honestly just prevent that by saving the endings until the end of the game, right? I don't see what the big deal with that is, unless they're gonna do like, 
more kids, I guess, but please don't. <laughs> please don't, man. The only time that really worked out was... <sighs> I mean, this game is not horrible, but Genealogy of the Holy War was the only one to get that right, in my opinion. But I guess we'll see what they have in mind for the next one. Just hopefully not Fates. <laughs> That's all I can say. But I think that if you just move the paired endings to just that, right? If you move it to the ending, then you can have these conversations happen really quickly without necessarily breaking immersion or like changing the reality of the situation too much, right? Because it doesn't really matter when the conversations happen in terms of the ending, right? But when it's something hard and concrete like getting married, then you get funny situations like this, where people who maybe never said two words to each other get married in the span of less than a month, you know? And that's just kind of, I mean, I'm sure it happens, but it's not realistic, let's be honest. I don't know. So, given these conditions, a body with a mass of X falls at a rate of Y. Hey. Um, what are you doing with my item pouch, Muriel? So, I'm starting to think that Muriel might be some kind of kleptomaniac. I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not. I'm really not sure if you picked up on this or whatever, but it seems to me that Muriel seems to find an awful lot of crap just lying around. She found Vikes X, she found this pouch. I don't know, man. Fool me once. Fool me once, that's all I'm saying. Seems awfully coincidental that it's always Muriel. I don't know. <laughs> Enlighten me. Experimenting in an attempt to establish a unified theory of falling. Whether thrown, catapulted, or dropped from a great height, it falls to the ground. The results have been consistent across hundreds of trials. Oh. Hey, I had a lot of fragile things in that pouch. Potions and baubles and... <sighs> you know what? Keep it. Very great. Thank you. <sighs> Sometimes I wish you'd show half as much interest in people as you do in science. Yes. Well, I am interested in certain people. You, for example. <laughs> I must study the humans to become more like them. Huh? Huh? Me? Why me? Right. Well, it's just I've never seen anybody else sleep for 64 hours straight. It was very impressive. You have a virtuous... You have a virtuosic proficiency and strategy despite your amnesia. It is truly fascinating. I heard that you got body bagged by Virion, however. <laughs> truly an enigma indeed. From this, we can extrapolate two possible hypotheses. One, talent is wholly independent from memory and experience. Two, memories and experience related to the use of one's talents cannot be lost. Um... Muriel, are you still talking to me? Yes. I am now, yes. Huh? Uh, you're not gonna tell me not to disrupt your thoughts again? Mm -hmm. I can, if you wish. <laughs> now loading, ignore.exe. I can't remember which part it was, but I remember reading a comment from one of you guys saying that you wish they would have explored uh, Muriel gaining some humanity, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. I can't remember exactly what the comment was, so I, I am paraphrasing a little bit. But I do remember seeing at least one fan of Muriel say that they wish they would have tried to humanize her a little bit more through some of these later supports. And if they honestly don't, I will say that's a little bit disappointing, because I thought that's where they were going with this, to be honest. I mean, in fairness, this is development. Now she's actually trying to have a conversation in her own, like, weird robotic sort of way. But... I think it could have been more interesting if she would have expressed some more emotion, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just this particular support chain, I don't know. No, N no thanks. I'm just happy to know I wasn't a bother, I guess. What? That would be difficult. You are the focus of intense interest on my part. <sighs> okay. I just don't like to think that I'm bothering a friend, that's all. Friend? Mm -hmm. What is friend? I was unaware that our interactions had acquired the label of friendship. Well, I've never had a friend before. This is a first! Why not? I think it must have happened somewhere along the way, right? I know? Actually, no, never mind. I hate you. Fascinating. Now loading happiness.exe! I'm so happy to have a friend! Pawn and hey you! Hey! Ah, uh, Pawn. I actually don't know that I'm using Pawn necessarily. I mean, obviously I'm bringing her along, but that's because her pair of bonuses are just insane. I mean, for actually fighting. I don't know if I would use her. I feel like if I was going to try and reclass her, I should have been focusing experience into her this entire time. Because by now it almost feels kind of too late. In a way. Yeah, her, like, her promotion bonuses, not even promotion bonuses really, her reclassing bonuses are crazy, but it's like, I gotta get four levels on her somehow. And I gotta do that in like three or four maps, and I just, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think Pond's going to be a Parabot, though, <laughs> more likely than not. What? 
Would you tell me more about the Tagwell? Oh yeah, and you guys did actually explain to me why she knew how to show up on the night that Emeryn was going to be assassinated. So that actually is explained. In one of her supports later on, it's actually revealed that somebody did tip Pawn off that this whole thing was going down. So that's why she showed up at a list all when she did. Which, I mean, that's good. I'm glad that was explained because, I mean, obviously she, she followed the she followed the soldiers, right? That part was obvious, but it's like, it would be awfully coincidental if she just happened to be in the area, you know what I mean? But no, it was actually explained. She was explicitly aware of the plan. I barely know a thing about them, and I thought, I mean, if you don't mind, yes. I do not. Huh? Wait, really? As you wish. No, I do not mind. Why do you doubt me? Well... I don't know. I guess I just didn't imagine you saying yes so easily. What with those veins popping out of your forehead? <laughs> She's jacked. She's on something. I was all ready to argue my case. You kind of took the wind out of my sails. I had this whole speech prepared and everything. <laughs> Is it I who frightened you so... Is it I who frighten you so, man spawn? Or the fact that I am tech well? No. No, neither. Nothing like that. It's just... I thought you might not take kindly to be asking about your people. I know it was humans like me who killed them after all. Well... Humans like you, yes, but not you. You do not bear the blame for what was done, so do not bear the guilt. Guilt creates distance. If you would learn of my people, cast it aside. Well... All right. Hmm. <laughs> At least you are calm. Your heart has slowed. Huh? You can hear my heartbeat? Yes. Lesson one. Tagwell have strong ears. Yeah, what did you think? Those were just for show at you? <laughs> Come on. A heart's beat always betrays its owner. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to never play cards against you. Oh, I have a meeting, but I would love to know more. Can we talk again soon? As you wish. Of course. It's nice to find someone who is curious about my people. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, because I too am curious. Oh my god, Muriel has so many supports. <laughs> what the hell? And I don't think she's using any of them. That's what sucks. Who the hell is Muriel gonna marry? We're kind of running out of choices, though, huh? Well, I guess this mystery man, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Muriel and Virion. Well, this should be a good one. Hold a moment. Yup, we got the goofy music and everything. Oh, man, this is gonna be a treat. <laughs> I hope. Virion. Do tell. Oh, my sweet. Uh, Muriel is it? <laughs> he doesn't even know her name. Come on, Virion. <laughs> I thought you were the player. How can I be of service? Why, thank you. I uh, I wonder if I might ask you a favor. All hail me. For <laughs> he's a whole hail me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I chose to use this guy. He's gonna be, he's gonna be fun. I think. For you, milady, I would gladly walk to the ends of the earth over hot coals and. Now then. I am studying prognostication and need you to further explain the art. Prognostication. No. Fortune telling. Oh, you mean fortune telling. Well, color me surprised. I assumed someone of your intellectual bent had little time for superstitions. Permit me to clarify. Within the camp, your fortunes have a reputation for being especially accurate. Even if they are mere shibble, shibble, shibble even if they are mere shibble, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Google, go! Shibboleth, a custom principle or belief distinguishing a particular class or group of people, especially a long-standing one regarded as outmoded or no longer important. God, I feel like every time Muriel speaks, I learn something. So there you go. <laughs> I guess that's the point of her character. Even if they are mere shibboleth, such oracles can inspire hope in the right people. This is a legitimate and possibly fruitful area of study. Oh, yes. Hmm, well, if you say so. But I must tell you this. There's a lot more to fortune telling than staring at entrails or poking at tea leaves. Please, my dear, I heard you reconsider this request. The path is long and difficult, and I do not wish to subject you to such an ordeal. Hmm? You claimed you would stride across hot coals for me. Was that a false? <laughs> Muriel, my girl. Not a false yield, no. More of a uh, rhetorical flourish. So, you are refusing my request? Fascinating. How fascinating. I thought my femininity sufficient to ensnare your cooperation. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. Well then, if you would not proffer aid, would you at least tell me my fortune? <sighs> no, that milady is more easily done. To be honest, I'm, I'm more than a little flattered that you're interested. Very gracious. Excellent. Oh, how we dance. Now, let's see what tomorrow has in store for you. Yes. Must you hold my palm while you work? I'd very much like to take notes. 
Do tell. Hmm, ha, huh. hmm, yes, yes. I see, buckets of it. You are drenched. Wait, we're going to a desert map, Virion. Be careful, something valuable, damaged by water. What? Water is vague, you must be more specific. Do you refer to a nearby lake or stream? Perhaps rain, condensation, a fog bank. Though in gaseous form, fog is actually... No. Milady, please, a fortune is not a textbook. I saw water, that is all. Where it came from, I cannot say. Indeed. Mm, such answers would be left out of any credible journal. But no matter, we shall see tomorrow if your augury bears fruit. <laughs> so we will, milady, so we will. <laughs> I'm starting to feel that Virion's a fraud, right? Because <laughs> I know some of you guys are laughing at me saying that Virion should be the new tactician over his season 4 with AU. And I'm guessing that there's more to that. Hopefully they actually get that support. But I feel like Virion's, like, he's probably causing these prophecies to come true, right? Like, he's telling people some crap, and then he's the one going out and actually making it happen. That's just the impression I get here. Okay, so I know we still have some more supports here, technically, but I don't see Krav and Sabia working together on this next map. I'm not bringing Kellum or Lonku, and I don't think I'm bringing Noe either. I might, it depends if there's space for her or not, just because she has extra movement, and she can, like, ferry somebody else a little bit quicker that way. It does make a difference because it's another desert map, but, as I recall, there should be quite a bit of story on this part, so... I think we're just gonna try to do this. Uh, if I end up bringing Noe, then we can do the Noe Gregor support, but... I wanna make sure that we at least get something accomplished today, you know what I mean? So, Captain, let me be certain I understand your report. Not only did you not confirm that the Elysian party carries the Fire Emblem, but you can't be certain that Prince Krom is even among them. Is that the gist of it? Y yes, milady. Oh, I'm not gonna live this cutscene, am I? The air was thick with sand. Even their number was difficult to ascertain. Perhaps if you had gotten closer, Captain. Here, let me show you. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. No, I insist. You can just you can show it, game. No, I'm sorry, I... <laughs> Bleh. Bullshit, Aversa, you cannot use swords. Don't lie to me. Apology accepted. I don't think you accepted his apology at all, Aversa. <laughs> oh my god, you can't be serious. Do try not to kill all the soldiers, my dear. We'll need a few for the welcoming party. The Elysians will be here soon. Crom and the emblem among them, I'm sure. That bleeding heart prince would never put good sense before his sister. Mm. And when they arrive, let's destroy them. It'll be a massacre worthy of their legendary father. I mean, I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could. Big talk, though, Gangrel. Oh, do we have like spies and crap? That Sorry. dude's an assassin. Yeah, what the hell? That's an assassin. Can I get him right now? That'd be pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. Oh, especially if they were as strong as the assassins at the end of the game. Oh my god. <laughs> the exalt is to be executed at the castle on the morrow. I heard it from the king's own lips, sire. Right. This is it, then. Hmm. Exactly as you predicted, hey you. They don't call me the tactician for nothing. So far, yes. But tomorrow will be the true test. Please. Chin up there. Show some confidence. It's your thinking that got us this far. The plan is risky, but only as much as called for. It's alright. We'll find a way to see it through. Hey you, don't worry. This time tomorrow, we'll be swapping stories with M on the road home. Yeah. I hope you're right. So do I, man. So do I. We got this, though. Oh, this guy. What is he even doing here? Ah, yes. Master Grima. We've been hearing a lot about this guy, for sure. Master Grima, Exalt Emerton is to be put to death on the morrow. Events will soon be back on course. Ha 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 yes. I should have never doubted the truth of your words. The yoke of destiny cannot be cast off. Even as they resist, they write your future with every step, O oh Great One. What's the matter, Great One? Just kinda tired. <laughs> ah! Huh? Hey, you. Hey, hey, you! <laughs> there we go. 
I've been waiting for that. What's wrong? Was it a nightmare? Oh. Is that what it was? Yeah, must have been. I'm sorry. What brings you here, Lisa? Was there something that you needed? <sighs> Frederick says it's time to march. And we can't start the plan without our master tactician. But Virion's over there. <laughs> no, we're talking about you. <laughs> Come on. This is one hell of an execution. Jesus. Seriously, no guillotine and no public hanging. Nope, we're literally going to push this chick off a cliff. And what other purpose could this structure serve? <laughs> Good people, warriors of Plagia, welcome, welcome one and all. Your anticipation electrifies the air. We all remember the crimes of Elise. Would you have their witch queen answer for them here, today, now? Yes! Finally, we will have justice. Executioner, if you would be so kind. Flavia. Leave it to me. I've got him. Nice! <laughs> Hand axe to the chest. Man, she's got some good aim, huh? Go. Everyone, now. Go. I'm very serious. Okay, so. Oh, Emran's not even on the map. I thought I thought she would be like on this structure or something like that. Although I guess that's over off and to the right or something like that. Anyways, this is another route, yeah. Yeah, so we gotta route every enemy again. We see this Libra person down here. Okay, so we gotta save them. Yeah, Libra's pretty good. We'll get them in a moment. Uh, lots of guys here though. Like this this initial group right here is what's gonna be the problem. I can already tell you, but. How's that blessed bow? How much power is this? This is actually 11 power. So a Virion. He would have 44 damage. I could get two more from like a strength tonic. This that's 46 damage. But I need to get to 50. I don't think I can, oh, I don't think Virion is strong enough. So maybe if I, okay, I'll tell you what though. If I forge up the blessed bow. Yeah, but forge up the blessed bow. Virion can one shot the wyverns. Let's see. Soldiers have 14 speed. 14, 12, 12. 12, 14. Uh, 9 for the sorcerers. So that's very low. Anybody can double them. Oh, yeah. And then we also have this Starya chick. I talk about her, but she's not a very popular character. So, you know. <sighs> and we have Campari, the boss. You're always going to drop a Draco shield. Oh, you know, speaking of stat boosters, though. We have Sumia and Cordelia. You know what, man? Let's just let's just go all in. We're using Cordelia too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You thought I was gonna use only one flyer? Oh no 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 no! This is the wrong channel for that. <laughs> you better go somewhere else. Adultery, not using the red-headed flyer. What's wrong with you? Yeah. So this one doesn't look too too bad necessarily. Uh, I, I still gotta go get tonics and crap like that. But for the most part, we can double all of these guys. They're not particularly fast. Only 14 speed on the soldiers. I mean, that's kind of... That's a little bit trickier. But, like, these these archers, for example, they're nothing, pretty much. It might not seem that way at first, but what I kind of like to do... And what I personally recommend that you do when you're thinking about stuff like this in this particular game. That is to say, in Fire Emblem Awakening specifically. The way that I like to think about stats... Is to, like is to think about not only what my raw stats are on a character, like Donald, for example. Like, he has really good stats, but he still can't be doubling these guys. But if I know that all I need to do is speed tie them in order to double attack them, then that's what I'll do. For example, anybody with 14 speed, if paired with Lanku, can double soldiers. Automatically. Now, 19 speed is a pretty tall order, don't get me wrong. But 14 is pretty easy. 14 is pretty easy, even by Awakening standards. It's way easier in Fates to think like this, but in Awakening, it it works out pretty much the same. Uh, I say it's easier in Fates because you have things like the Mess Hall and whatnot to patch up your stats. But as long as I can have 14 speed on a character, then they can double these soldiers, for example. If I so choose. Uh, Muriel, if I just give her a speed tonic, she could easily double these archers as well, for example. And I don't even need Lanku for that. So yeah, there's... As high as the stats get on the enemies... 
there are ways to counteract it. It's just that I feel like they came a little bit too late. They came a little bit too late. Because if, if, for example, Muriel, I, I keep using her as an example, I guess. But if she were able to have been doubling this entire time, you got to figure. She would have not only... Uh, she would have not only been more useful, obviously, but she would have also been a higher level as a result of getting more kills that way. So, Awakening kind of hurts itself in that sense, where the start is sort of slow, uh, but it's starting to get to the point where I feel like we can make up for the huge stats on enemies to, to an extent, you know what I mean? Through a number of different ways, be it pair-ups, tonics, etc., etc. You think they can upgrade my tinfoil hat? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I want Donald with the plus two tin foil hat. Okay, so that took me a second, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what we're gonna do here. Should not be too hard, all things considered. Let's just set ourselves up, hopefully for success and not failure. Uh, what else do we need to do here? All oh, right, right, right. No, Muriel here. Yeah, this right here is what we want. So at this point, I've sold basically everything. <laughs> What I have is what I have, because I am broke, but I needed to forge a bunch of crap. I needed to forge Donald a decent weapon. It's actually not enough, which sucks, but it'll get him started at the very least. That's the, that's the one thing about using Donald as well. Not only is it impossible to train this guy, but he also resets back to E-Rank the second you take him out of his villager class. And he doesn't have a Lance using class that he can go into, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, and as I was starting to say, though, I basically sold everything that is not <laughs> currently equipped. As you can see, some of my characters don't even have items like Rick and... He's just coming because it's a desert map, man. And mages can move through the desert for free for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what the justification is for that in this game. I know some of the other games try to pull some crap out of their behinds, but I don't buy it. Not at all, but I'll definitely take it. Oh yeah, you won't hear me complaining. You can also sell, like, the dragon stone and the beast stone, because those are worth quite a bit of money, but I don't want to do that unless I have to, because that's basically a commitment that I'm not using Pot or Noe ever. For any reason. Bottom line. This was an expensive map, but we got all the tonics we need, so that's why some people have stat boosts. And I also forged the bronze axe for Donald. I also... And also, I forged up the Dell Thunder by one more point, because Muriel needs it to kill things. Namely, Archer. She can one-round them if it's a little bit stronger. Uh, so I think that this should be just about perfect. Oh yeah, I also forged the Blessed Bow up by one point. I think I said I was going to do that, but... Take out all the soldiers first. We'll deal with the Mad King later. <laughs> oh, will you now? Bahaha! <laughs> We've been expecting you, little prince. Men, kill him. Kill his sister. Kill his troops and his friends and anyone else you find. Kill them all! And then he runs away like a bitch. Okay. So for once in Awakening, I kind of thought through exactly what it was I was going to be doing here. Because we're actually at about the point that some of the maps start to get uh, a little bit closer to what I would call traditional Fire Emblem maps. Or at least the next few coming up certainly feel that way to me. Where it's like... You, you can blast through them real, real quick if you have a solid enough plan. Speaking of which, Virion might be pretty useful here depending on how he levels up. That's why I gave him a speed tonic because if he gets it right here, which he doesn't, unfortunately. Not a very good level up at all, really. Wow, that was trash, my dude. Well, they can't all be winners. What I was hoping would happen is that he would get speed so that he would end up counter-killing this mage eventually. You'll see him, he's definitely going to go for Virion. Without a doubt, he's going to go for Virion. But alas, what can we do? Not meant to be. Sadly, we're not doubling him. And for the rest of these guys, we're just going to pair up. Because if we do this just correctly, we should be able to make it pretty safe here to advance. There's a lot of guys. Like I said, the starting group... Oh, dang it, we want animations on. Hello, where is my brain? Like I said, the starting group, though, is pretty, pretty dense. So we need to take out every single one that we can. It's only going to be the mage that survives. Which is a little bit unfortunate, considering he's the one that can move through the desert for free. But as long as he can't actually kill anybody, I do not care. Speaking of killing, way to go, Cordelia! I thought she was bad. What happened? <laughs> well, okay, yeah, it would be better if she could actually double on her own. Like Sumia the Broken. So she's actually paired with Gregor because I didn't have anybody else that this could really be. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, by giving her a strength tonic, if she gets one crit here... Or if Gregor jumps in, she will kill this guy, and I need him dead. Now, that's two 30s and two 29s, so chances are this guy is dead. Nine times out of ten. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's Sumia. Air superiority. More, that's what I'm talking about. 42 damage. It's also really nice because if she would have crit the first attack, she would have just killed this guy. Not what happened, obviously, but it was a possibility. Now, hey, you, she only has the win because she's so goddamn strong that she just... Like, what, what else does she need, man? 
I like how shiny her new outfit is though too. It looks like she has reflective tape all over her robes. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that, but uh, she definitely stands out. So if that was the intention, then uh, I suppose mission successful. This could have been bad actually in hindsight. Yeah, if this guy, <laughs> whoa. If this guy would have had magic plus two, Muriel would have died. But he did not, thankfully. Now we can trade back to the hand X for you. And like I said, I forged up the Del Thunder by one more point so that she could kill archers on this map. And assuming we don't miss a 91, that should keep everybody safe. Now, of course, it would have been really sick if Virion wanted to get that point of speed. Like I said, he'd be doubling. But that's not what happened, of course. <laughs> should be fine, though. And you know, I've kind of just noticed this about Muriel, but she hasn't gotten a lot of HP. And she continues to not get HP. Wasn't her growth 70%? Didn't she only hit it one time on eight levels? What's going on with her? <laughs> No wonder, because it feels like she's getting one shot an awful lot, even for Muriel, and then... Yeah, when I see level ups like that, it's... It's not looking so good for her. She might need a robe, honestly. It's kind of the thing with Awakening, man. It feels like you're always walking a tightrope when it comes to growth characters, and everybody is a growth character, so it's like... Ugh. So, we're to kill or die here simply because the king commands it. Pff, what do I care of these Elysians? We're given no reason to fight, only orders. What's the point? Besides, I've always been quite good at choosing who to hate on my own. God, this girl. This girl, all right. All right, so, spoiler alert, <laughs> Tharia's not my favorite character. I'll talk about her when we actually get her. Like I said, she's recruitable, but like, oh, I don't know, man. I've really only seen the support between her and Robin, so that's probably why I would imagine. I know that people like Tharia, okay, don't get me wrong. I know that for a fact. I just don't get it, man. Because she's like, she's really obsessive. She's really, really obsessive. So, for anybody who's a Tharia fanboy and or Tharia fangirl, give me two reasons. Two reasons you like Tharia. I have my guesses, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. God damn it. <laughs> there's got to be something I'm missing. Also, there's this guy down here, too. I I'm sure it is her supports, though, right? Some, like, they can't all be about Robin. I don't know if I'm using her or not, necessarily. Exalt Emerin. No. Godspeed me to her side. Yeah, it doesn't look like you're trying to go anywhere at all, dude. So, you can just knock that off. He's gonna sit right there. We do still have to be somewhat quick in getting down to him. Because he only has three of these concoctions. And when they run out, he's in a bad spot. Of course, he can outrun these guys. I don't know why he doesn't attempt to. He has mage movement, but hey. <laughs> I guess we can't all be like, hey, you master tactician. Speaking of hey, you, she can kill this guy for me right now. And he's got to go. I'm so tired of these Silverlands dudes. Man, they are so strong. But she can take him out of there. And this is kind of what I'm talking about with this map seemingly having a little bit more traditional of a flow. Because it, it feels like we're making uh, very natural progress, I suppose, for lack of a better word. And we haven't been seeing that on every single map so far. I would say that much at the very least. It certainly seems as though some of the maps were more like, more just chaotic, more random almost in a way. But not really with this one, there's a very logical progression. If you know how to break the enemy lines, and that's kind of what we were trying to do on the first turn, right? Make sure that the only enemies that were actually going to be in our range couldn't kill anybody. And because we did exactly that, uh, we're not in a terrible position right here. Now, this guy. Yeah, I should have killed the mage with hate. Ah, damn it! <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. But I, I should have because I need to put Donald in such a way that he can double the the dang soldier. But I also, I mean, I obviously need to kill the mage. And I'd also like to drop Cordelia because I want to pair her on the next turn to potentially kill one of these wyverns. Which is why she has the strength tonic to begin with. Uh, maybe this isn't the end of the world, actually. Because this guy will be more tempted to attack Muriel than... Than Lissa. Yeah, because Muriel has less defense somehow. Okay, so yeah, that might work out. What I can do is I can have Muriel kill this guy then. Yeah, yeah. Mm, final answer. Yeah, Muriel drops this guy right now. Let's go, Muriel! I, w I wish you were bulkier, though. 19 HP. There's really not a whole lot that she's surviving, huh? That's that's incredible, <laughs> honestly. But at any rate, what I want to do is have Donald right here. 
it is unfortunate that he's not going to be able to kill this soldier. However, he will be so low that I feel it shouldn't be an issue to deal with this one last guy. And I'm going to give Pond over to Don and Boy. If anything, Pond can just kill the soldier. It's not the best use of experience, but more likely than not, I can just do that. And we won't have too much to worry about. Yeah, because Donald's going to leave him on one, if I've done my math correctly. Although Pond might jump in, Cordelia might jump in. Well, not Cordelia, I guess, but Pond might jump in. Which would kill the soldier. Now, Frederick is, of course, going to do as Frederick does and kill a whole bunch of crap for me. But this should, in theory, be a pretty good position. Cordelia was supposed to have the javelin. <laughs> I don't think that needed to be said. But she was definitely supposed to have the javelin. So that is a huge mistake that's going to get me killed. Man, what is it with me and messing up Cordelia's equipment? I seem to be doing that an awful lot. Pond, come on. Work with me. Work with me. You can't get good health these days. You just can't. You just can't. Now, I don't actually need any dual attacks here for the archers because Frederick is just that strong thanks to the defense tonic. Or not, <laughs> yeah. The defense tonic boosts strength. True story. Uh, I don't, you know what I mean, though. I gave him a straight tonic. He's fine. Against these guys, though, I think we do need Samir to jump in. However, as we saw against that first mage, it's about a 70% shot for her to jump in at all. And if she jumps in, period, of course she's going to blow him away. But I'm pretty sure that if she had jumped in at all... Oh, uh, let's see, 12, 12, 13. No, okay, so her getting a crit is good then in that case. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Same with that level, really. Fair enough. Not the best, not the worst. That guy had a pretty good shot to die, though, regardless. Really, he does go for Lisa. Why? Why? Why, I wonder. Because it's bad for me, I guess? I mean... Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's definitely not good. I'm actually thinking, in hindsight, that maybe letting... Hmm. Maybe drawing this guy is actually a really bad idea. Well, I mean... Yeah, I think I might have screwed this up. I will not lie to you. I, de I definitely think I screwed this up. I shouldn't have actually drawn the sorcerer after all, I want to say. But... I guess we'll see where this goes. I mean, it's too late to do anything now. He's here. He's gonna try to kill me. Make no mistake. But I can use Muriel to kill this guy. Well, I feel edified. Man, she's about to get another level up. Hopefully better than the last. I won't lie to you all. Well, actually, there's one thing that I can do that maybe works. Uh... We can start with this move because this will for sure work, so I can just kill this guy with Hey You. I actually think I can get out of this. I think so. If I've done this correctly, anyways. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to find out very quickly. So we get a free javelin and nothing else. That's always good. At this point, we're going to give Krom to Fred. And we're going to shoot on this guy. He has a 45% chance to hit us. If he does, I think he just straight up lives. But... But I think that Gregor could kill him. Yeah, and if Gregor can kill him, then it's like, it's not a big deal at all. So maybe we actually aren't as screwed as I thought. He'd have to hit me first. Which, yeah, naturally. So we're really going to put this to the test, I guess. But... If I do, like, one of these moves... Oh, please tell me I still KO. Yeah, I will with Sumia. Come on, it's Sumia. It's Sumia, come on. Yeah, there we go. That's what I thought. <laughs> that is exactly what I thought. So Donnie Boy knocks this guy out of the park. Hell yeah, kill it your time. Like I said, sooey. <laughs> oh, he gets a lot of experience at this point. That's good, if nothing else. Uh, I wanted to heal this turn, but that's not really an option. Hopefully. Oh, please let this. Please just let this work. I'm not sure that it will, though. I'm going to be honest. Because Amiya's strong, but she's not, like, that strong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Challenge. Maybe if I would have given her the strength tonic. Ah, that would have been, like, the 100% way, I think. Anyways, we're going to take Krom and we're going to go pick up Tharya. And I like to think that, hey, you put him up to this ladies' man that he is. <laughs> hey, Krom, go get her, tiger. What, you doubt me? Watch this. You there. Whoa, those are some giant bazongas. <laughs> Maybe I'm not that good at this. Yeah, think. You there. Are you with the Plegians? You seem reluctant to fight. Maybe. Death comes for us all eventually. Why invited early, fighting for a cause I don't believe in? What? Nah, I'm so dark. <laughs> so, I should take that as a no, or am I going to be killing you? <sighs> Let's just say I'm keeping my options open. I mean, long live the king and all, but I'd like to keep living as well. And I have a bit of a rebellious streak, I'm afraid. A dark side. Good. Then perhaps you would rebel now and fight for our cause. What? You would trust me. 
What if this is all a ploy to plunge a dagger in your back? Hey, what's that over there? Huh? Uh. My sister, the Exile. I think she would trust you. And I'm trying to learn from her. Besides, I already need to watch my back, whether you're with us or not. <laughs> Damn, that's a good line, Grub. Interesting. But in all fairness, I don't know if you should be listening to Emrin that much. She would trust literally anybody. Did she or did she not trust the Mad King? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's odd. Usually when I bring up the backstabbing bit, the discussion's over. All right, then consider me your new ally. For now. Well, I didn't take very much. Not at all, but... <sighs> Do we even survive? <laughs> like, real talk, are we even good here or what? Because... Well, I guess we're gonna find out real quick. Let's go, Fred. Let's go, Fred. We hit him really good. Oh, Tharya, you, you beast. You beautiful woman. I take it all back. She's now my favorite character. Oh, the clutch. What I was going to do was have Cordelia take Sumia and then have Sumia do the fighting. Because she would have been able to attack this spot. And, uh, maybe kill the Draco? I I doubt it, actually. I, I think that Tharya just bailed me out. Okay, so that's why people like Tharya, right? That right there? That must be the reason. Must be the reason. Uh, since we're not going to die, though, I guess I can actually bother talking about her. And she is very good. Very, very good. She has very good base stats, as you can see. And by the way, since there seemed to be some kind of confusion on the last part, I should have mentioned this, but... Noah and Gregor were the first characters to get the Lunatic Mode bonuses that I was talking about earlier, so they're actually a little bit better on higher difficulties than they are on lower difficulties. <laughs> so is Tharya. So she has... Very good starting stats, as you can see, but her growth rates are also good, I'm sure. But the main thing is that she is a dark mage. She starts at level 10, which is already at pretty high level, so she can be used very, very easily. You don't have to train her or anything like that, and her stats are already good. Very tanky, as you see. 10 physical defense. Not too bad. She has the ever-so-broken Nosferatu Zome, which, as we've seen, drains health as it connects to the enemy. Okay, good. I was just checking to make sure I did this correctly, because Donna will die. But, yeah, she has the broken-ass Nosferatu Tome. And, uh, with her base defense being so good at 10, and you having no shortage of people who can boost defense even further, she becomes stupidly tanky. Stupidly tanky and can restore her own health 100% of the time. It's not like Soul. This will always work. And she's a magic user on top of that, so she can do that from 1 to 2 range. Pretty fast. Uh, with starting speed, anyways, right? 13 isn't bad. As you can see, she can double things on this map just fine. So yeah, I mean, not really a whole lot to complain about with her. She's just a very, very good unit, honestly. And of course, this is speaking in terms of not just beating the game with Robin immediately. Because I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could, but... Like, there's not even really a point in discussing that sort of thing, because... It, it, would, it would be very boring, because it would be just me saying, Okay, this character is also not Robin, you know, over and over and over again. I think it'd be more fun to think of how characters would work on an actual team. And if that were the case, Tharya is a good unit, for sure. But into, like, the strictest low turn count sense or whatever, I'm sure she's just kind of okay. Because you still have to train her and whatnot. A little bit. A little bit. Level 10 is good for the start, but if she wants to keep up and all that, she needs experience here and there. I don't think you really need to know Sferatu tank that much. Like, it's not required to beat the game or anything like that, but it's, just, it's very broken, <laughs> is the main thing. Okay, so here's how we do this, and I guess this is a kill for Cordelia after all, so what we can do... We can move for Muriel right there. I only have the Delta Thunder, yeah, that's right. Uh, she will... She'll get a level up, even if Gregor doesn't jump in to finish this guy off, so I'll just have her attack, and then I'll have Cordelia get the kill. Seems fair to me. Muriel already got a good one, so let's get another one. Hit points this time. Yes, 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 more of that. That's pretty good. That's really good. In fact, <laughs> I wish her magic would play along a little bit better. So she can just blow stuff up like Heyu has been, but with her getting some speed now, I think she should be good. Hopefully. I don't know if I can count on that necessarily, but it would certainly be nice if she wanted to be good and not bad. Now, if Frederick, we can just have him hammer this guy. Oh, he lives? Are you kidding me? Well, Sumia's gonna kill him. What am I saying? Yeah, I'll just use the Iron Lance in that case. Actually, I can't. I can't because, yeah. It has to be the Killer Lance, otherwise she won't do the damage because she's in the back. So yeah, we just use the hammer right here, and then this guy dies to Fred. You'll never save your precious exalt scum! Oh, really? I guess he must not know. 
He must not know. Goodbye. That's all the damage we needed. It's been a lot of fun, man. We have an Emerin to save. Oh, Poppy's lame. Oh, so lame. I mean, I was never dying here. It's just that. <sighs> you lucky dog. Oh, man, you were mine. <laughs> well. You know, honestly, Virion can 1v1 this guy, I guess. 24 minus... No, I live. I live easily. And that's another cool thing about the Blessed Bow, I guess. It heals you a little bit every single turn, so... We're not really in danger of dying, per se. Delia can smack this guy to the ground. Yeah, we just take him out, though. Easy, easy, easy. That's not a level still? Come on, Delia. Well, I can give... Hey, you to Lissa which I have to do if I'm going to rescue and get this other guy because I had that support with her on Hayu and this is giving her enough uh, enough magic basically oh I gotta start spamming rescues clearly oh my god that's so much experience <laughs> and you can buy them so it's like why am I not using that more just for Lisa, if anything anyways with Arya, we move to there we talk to Libra hey you there who are you why do you fight alone Good heavens. Good heavens. Your Prince Krom, brother to Her Grace the Exalt. What? You know me. Yes. Know you. Of course, sire. All Elysian clergy do. I must thank the gods for uniting us. Oh, dearest and most heavenly father. Yeah, with all respect, I don't have time for your shit. It's action that's called for. <laughs> ah, too true. We hurried here to help as soon as word came out of the execution. Wait, oui, then there are more of you. <laughs> Alas, there were. I lost many brave comrades along the way. In truth, I was starting to doubt the purpose of my struggle. But no longer. Pray, sire, let me let my axe serve you and your party. Yes. Your love for my sister is clear. Do you see now, hey you? I told you I could talk to a woman. Yeah, just keep going, buddy. I would be honored to be joined by such a formidable woman of the cloth. Um man, sire. Man of the cloth. Pay no attention to my luscious flowing locks. You're up. You're not a woman. And there it is. Beg pardon. No, sire. Women are clerics. I am a priest. Well, technically a war monk, if you care to split hairs. Forgive oh, me. Oh, well, yes, I'm... I didn't mean to imply. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> no. Crime is so bad with women. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, it's all right, sire. You realized your mistake quickly enough. It could have become much more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> much more. Uh... What are you trying to say there, man? Right, let's stop this conversation now. <laughs> uh, so that's Libra. Yeah, he's a guy, by the way. What is there to say about Libra, though? I mean, he's criminally underrated, honestly. Very, 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 very good unit. As far as staff users go, probably the best one. All things considered, because he is free, and that is the name of the game here, folks. There's absolutely no cost to actually using this guy. His stats are just good right off the bat. Hold on, let's let's kill this guy before we overlay anything. <laughs> yeah, more note for myself, really. Ugh, killing me will only feed Plegius rage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure the last guy said that exact same thing. Come on now, Drago Shield, cool. So uh, Sumia, right? <laughs> She's about to become even better. The thing with Libra, though, right, is that his base stats are incredibly good. Incredibly good. And he also does get lunatic mode bonuses, so he's even a little bit better here than he would otherwise be. I think he has a little bit more staff range than usual. I think that's just about all the changes with that. But, needless to say, with stats like this, he can get some stuff done. He has C-rank and X, C-rank and stabs right off the bat. Sure, if you trained somebody up from scratch and got them to level 20 and promoted them, they would obviously have better stats than this. Hopefully, it's Awakening, so they probably should. But again, he's free. I didn't have to do anything at all to get him this good. Does Tharya really give that much defense? Hold on, sorry, that threw me off. Why does she give... Do they give three defense? And I wasn't watching? Jesus! Sorcerers are broken, dude. But, <laughs> with Libra, right? His growths are still good as well. Probably not as good as some of the other first-gen characters, but still pretty damn good. And like I say, he has 16 magic by default, which as you see with Tharya right here, puts it up to 20, which gives him 10 staff range on any staff that he can use. So that'd be like the ward staff, the physics staff, rescue staff, etc., etc. Anything that depends on your magic for range, 
he's got really good range right off the bat. So that's huge. That's huge. I mean, even Lisa is going to struggle to keep up with numbers like that for quite a while. At least until she's promoted for the most part. So, there's, it's not like he's redundant or anything. No, he, he serves a purpose. And the ability to use axes isn't too bad either because he can use, like, hammers and crap right at base. Not the strongest character or anything, but 15 strength isn't bad by any means. And since his starting speed isn't so... He's, he's not, like, slow, you know what I mean? He's not so fast he's doubling anything, particularly. But he's also fast enough to still be able to double armor knights. So I, I shouldn't say he doesn't double anything. I should, I should say that he doesn't double much by himself. Which, that's closer to the truth, really. He doesn't double much by himself. But the things that he does are exactly the things he needs to. So, like, armor knights, I'm sure you could get him to double, like, sorcerers and crap as well. Really good level up. I would have liked strength. Please, Cordelia. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Uh, but there's not really too much else to add about Libra beyond that. He's a very, very solid unit. Very, very solid unit. He's free. That's the big thing. All right, listen. Libra heal themselves. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, who wants this last kill? So, Muriel it is, I guess. I'm pretty sure that Muriel got enough speed on this map that she just straight up doubles Wyverns very easily from now on. So, she should be okay on that front, I really want to say. All in all, not too bad of a map, though. We're finally at the point where we can put up an adequate challenge to these enemies, man. We can finally fight back a little bit, and that definitely helps out improve the pacing of this game. And I think that's such a big thing. I think that's what this game struggles with most, truthfully. It's just the pacing of some of these maps are just all out of whack. But not a map like this. I feel like that was challenging enough to... You know, be an actual consideration, right? You have to think about what you're doing, but it's not so punishing that y you feel like you have to turtle the entire time. There's plenty of plane styles, too. I don't know if I specifically mentioned that or not, but you're not just stuck in the desert like in a lot of maps. In a lot of cases, a map like that right. could be very slow and boring, but I think they handled it very well. Just my opinion. Hey, you. Their wyvern riders have fallen. The skies are clear. I'm giving the signal. Fila, sweet, just in time. Your Grace. Fila, I'm so glad to see you safe. But how? Right. Con Basilio's men freed me. Come, we must hurry. What? What? Pegasus Knights? How did they? That damned Elysian tactician does not play fair. <laughs> yes, well, neither do I. How? You can't. <laughs> Oh, she summoned Risen. Okay, I got you. Risen. Oh, gods, no. Krom, they're Risen everywhere. Wait, wait, wait. We have Virion, though, with the Blessed Bow. Just give him Frederick, man. Damn, not now. Come on, you guys. Hey, you. I thought you were good at this strategy thing. Oh, did an army of living corpses just appear out of the blue? Truly the heavens smile upon mighty King Gangrel on this day. <laughs> no. She would counter team me. Nothing but archers as well. Goodbye, Fila. I actually don't remember this at all. What? <laughs> so I guess that's why we don't get Fila. Risen, how? Your Grace, I forgive me. Oh no. Fila. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent one, Pegasus Knight. Ha ha. Watch how they fall one by one. Ouch. No, not my green units. Come on. We just got those. No, no, no. God. We've lost. So close. I believe this is what they call a reversal of fortunes. Now grovel before me. Plead. Beg for your worthless lives. I will not fail. I give up my life before I beg for it from you. Tell him, Grum. Huh? Oh, now that is a good line. A fitting epitaph for your tombstone, perhaps. But it's not just your life on the balance. The exile still stands upon the block. And I have a dozen bows trained on her. All it would take is one word from me. Sister. Em, hold on. I'm... Oopsie. Archers, if this Elysian pup so much as twitches, let fly your arrows. <clears throat> I, I'll kill you. Come on. I don't know. I think he outstats you by a fair bit. Oh, I should have shown them. Yeah, because of her and Gangrel on the man with the snarn here. Yeah. Go ahead. I welcome it. Just know you were responsible for Big Sister's bloody demise. And what of the rest of you, eh? 
Who wants the honor of killing the Exul? No one? Bah, your merry Ben isn't quite so headstrong anymore, is it? Pathetic! Damn you. Damn you. Yeah, exactly. D exactly. Back for your life! Now, now, my boy. No one needs to die today. Not you, not the Exul, not your friends. Just lay down your sword and give me the fire emblem. I. Rob, you can't trust him. Still of course I can't trust him. I'm not an idiot. Well, based on that conversation with Lieber earlier, you know what? This is not the time. But if I just say no, he'll. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I just say no, he'll kill her. The gods are cruel. Damn them. My sister or my duty. A problem with no right answer. Yet I must choose. Sacrifice Emrin. I'm sorry, Em. I'm the new ruler. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I've been waiting for this moment my entire life. Everett, jump! Do a flip! I know it's hard to admit, Crom, but it's the only choice. Compared to the lives of thousands, one person, any one person is... Don't. Just don't say it. What's this? You'll let your sister and ruler die, all to say some family trinket. Oh, so delicious. I can't wait to hear what your people have to say about it. The exalt is dead. Long live her murderer! Your halidom will collapse before you could even begin your rule. Gods. We'll see when the time comes, but first I'll see you dead. Enough. No, wait. <laughs> Silence! Sister. Em. <laughs> King Gangrel, is there no hope you will listen to reason? <sighs> uh, you mean listen to more of your sanctimonious babble? I think not. No, all I want now is to hear the thunk and arrows, and a splat as you hit the ground. Take one long last look from your perch. You do so enjoy looking down on people. Then prepare to meet the ground and your maker. That is, unless someone were to give me the emblem now! Alright. Alright. Em, I know you won't approve, but this is my final decision. Maybe someday we'll face a crisis where maybe the fire emblem would have helped. But I know for a fact that Elise needs you. Today, the people need their exo. And we need our sister. If those dark days should come, we'll face them together. Krom. Krom. Thank you. I know now what I must do. Em, what are you... Plegians, I ask you hear the truth of my words. War will win you nothing but sadness and pain, both inside your borders and out. Free yourselves from this hatred, from this cycle of pain and vengeance. Do what you must, as I will do. See now that one selfless act has the power to change the world. Sister! Em, no! No! No reaction. Was I wrong then? Krom, this is some torch I'm passing you. You know, I gotta be honest. I won't say that I'm necessarily surprised that this is what happens. And I, even when I played it the first time, right? I wasn't necessarily surprised that this happened. You know what I mean? The game kind of... Well, I, I was joking about it, but yeah, the game really does <laughs> kind of raise your death bias a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. But... I think that as far as a death in Fire Emblem goes, this actually means something. In the grand scheme of things, and I... I mean, we'll see more of that later, because this does have a ripple effect. But, but this isn't, like, some kind of one-off deal where the game, like... 
and does it just to tug at your heartstrings or whatever, and then just forget about it. No, this this does actually change the story. What what doesn't change the story is that choice, actually. I, I think I already said that, but, uh... Yeah, I can't be the only one who sat there for, like, five minutes on the first time I played and just, like, seriously contemplated which option to pick. Turns out, both of them are fine. I, I say both of them are fine. Both of them result in Emran becoming very well acquainted with the ground. How about that? No matter what you do, she does jump. But it does serve a purpose. And I have to respect that to some degree. And yes, I know about the DLC, but I... Was that even... First of all, is any of the DLC stuff even canon? And secondly, it wasn't... It wasn't released when I first played this game, so that didn't really impact my experience with this. Although I definitely see how it could in hindsight. Uh, I, don't, I don't really want to get too much into that, really. But if, if you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you kind of understand my sentiment on that. When I played this the first time, the DLC didn't exist. Basically. So yeah, overall, I think that uh, it's a good moment. I, I honestly think so. Oh, gods. Damn you, gangrel! No! <laughs> well now, how disgustingly noble. And so lovely a fall. Here I thought death to be an ugly thing. I've never seen one fall so gracefully, in fact. And I've seen many fall. I can't believe she really did a flip. Ah, so ends Emran, at least his most exalted. But how can we ensure everyone remembers this beautiful moment of her sacrifice? Perhaps we should gather up her body and put it on display. <laughs> Gangrel, you die today. I think we could do it. I definitely do. Go. No, boy, I secured an escape route. We have to flee. Oh, come on. Hey, you's overleveled. Sister. But, but her body. I have to. Hell no. You have to run. Now do it. Hey you, don't let him do anything stupid! No. Oh God, no. No, no, I'm too late. Our bleak future is written once more. And darkness awaits us all. What were you doing, Marth? Oh, sorry, I slept in today. Of all the things to inherit from her. So she just shows up out of nowhere and doesn't even do her job! Marth, my girl. You had one job. You had one job! <laughs> Oh, man. Well. Another paralogue! Now, seriously, of all times. But with that, the exalt is fallen. At least his ruler is no more. Gangrel gets away for the time being, but you already know we're gonna be on that ass like nothing else, dude. So that is exactly what we are going to do next time. That said, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like rating. Helps me out, guys. Let me know your thoughts as well, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you then. Peace.